Hello, my friend. This is the third part of the lecture serial on uh, the divorce question. Uh, why we divorce our husband? That is the title of this topic today. Recent research from various uh, countries indicate that women are often the ones to initiate divorce in relationship. A 2015 study by the American Sociological Association, ASA, found that women initiate two-thirds of all the divorces in the United States of America. In China, a report by the Supreme People's Court revealed that among the 1.4 million divorce cases in 2017, 73.4% of the plaintiffs were women. In Nigeria, the 2018 Demographic and Health Survey showed that while the total number of official marriage dissolutions is lower than in the United States and European countries, women are still more likely than men to be divorced or separated. In 2019, Al Jazeera identified that Kano State is having the highest number of divorces in Nigeria. Although divorce rates in Nigeria are not alarmingly high, they are on the rise. Given the global trend of women initiating divorce more frequently than men, the question arises, what are men doing or not doing that causes women to fall out of love more quickly than men? This is the third part of the serial on divorce. Part 1, if you remember, discussed why men divorce women. Part 2 explored women's responses to the allegation leveled by men. And now part 3, we will examine why women choose to file for divorce or separate from someone they once loved. Let's delve into these reasons and uh, I shall be reading 15 out of uh, the 74 responses that I got from Nigerian women, uh, Ghanaian women, women in Sierra Leone, Zambia, Kenya, South Africa, Canada, United States of America, and United Kingdom. Listen to this. This is uh, Professor Grace in Lagos. Women are now educated, enlightened, and independent. In those days, women depended on their husband for virtually everything, and that is why our mothers will say they will remain in the marriages because of their children, despite the mistreatment. But the current women go to school, and social media has opened their eyes to solutions or alternatives. Many are doing perhaps better than their husbands. Religion is becoming less appealing, and they know that marital status is not a qualification to enter heaven. Therefore, they are less likely to stick to a miserable marriage for too long, the type their mothers accepted from their fathers. Let the men know that the days of putting women down are over. Rolake, a divorce lawyer in Lagos, men mature less mentally than women. We have to take care of children and husbands. We worry about virtually everything in the house, water to electricity, education of the children, their health, homework, Women are worried about what they will eat now and what they will take to school tomorrow. Have the school fees been paid? Is their uniform dirty or worn out? I am the one to tell them to go and cut their hair and take the girl to the salon to do her hair. All my husband did was to drop whatever he had and go out to watch football. And when night came, he wanted to sleep with me again, who had been working since morning. Marriages are shelters for men, but chains for women. I felt tired. I am not ready to die because I want to be a Mrs. Someone. I have been living for him all my life and not for myself. I am the one slaving for the marriage to survive. I also have dreams to fulfill if he has none. I was sent to school by my parents to be trained for a purpose, not to become Mrs. Miserable. I don't care what society says because I am living as a single parent. He who feels it knows it. Babi in Portacourt has this to say. The ideal marriage should be contentment. The house can be small and the income can be very little, but let us enjoy the process. I thought we were in love. We wanted to be together. Month after marriage, our hearts became more and more distant. Every day he was busy. He will come home with the computer to work. I am talking to him. He is busy. This is no no for me. The longer the working hours are, the higher and the possibility of divorce. Don't bring office work to home. Office work should remain in office. As time passed, the relationship became indifferent. The home was cold and boring. I, I became married to the social media. He is happy and active outside. I am married and lonely at home. There were days he would come in from the office that he was going to Ghana 
to record or to Abuja to do content. And there is no proof that he traveled anywhere. I don't know if he was in a hotel with another woman. There was no time I could say, this is where my husband is. I am not a fool. Thank God we have no children yet. The marriage was just eight months. I left. Beatrice in Nanugu. I can't stick infidelity. It hurts me. Immediately after our honeymoon, he drastically changed from that romantic husband to a controlling and emotionally abusive one. I think I was the one who even forced him into marriage. I saw all the red flags when we were dating. But because of the pressure from my parents to get married, I continued with him, thinking he will change or I will change him. No, no woman can change any man. He became worse. Still, he wanted to be sleeping with me every day. An unhappy woman cannot open her legs anytime. I am not a sex machine. If you want my legs, come through my heart. We got into fight so many times. At a stage, I wonder if I will not die in this marriage. After four years, I moved out, thinking he will come to his senses and come to apologize and promise to be better. Today, he has not come. I am well employed and doing well. I had two children for him. Zainab in Kano says this. He had promised that he will not marry another wife, that he is okay with me. He is a young boy. What does he need a second wife for? Because his father is rich. He has not built any business or future for himself. That is why people in the South always see us Northerners as lazy. I am not lazy. I am educated and ready to take on the future. He is just 32 and wants to marry the second wife. I told him never. I want to build a good home. Forget about Islam and believe that men can marry many wives. I am not ready for that. I schooled in the University of Ibadan and my eyes are open. Moboja in Lokoja said, I married him because of his broad shoulders, fine face and charm, and I want to have fine children like him. That's what I call love, and I thought love was blind. It was until I got into marriage that I realized that there was more to marriage than fine face and broad shoulder. If love is blind, marriage will cure that blindness. Finance will remove the cataracts and glaucoma. After three years, I realized I was married to a handsome loafer, what the Yoruba call Fawaraja. Halimat in Eloni says, five years into the marriage, he was unemployed. I don't know any responsible friends with him. All his life, he and his friends were talking about America, Nyanki. They know America more than the people who lived in America. He believes his life can't matter until he gets to America. He was always calling friends for money. He has never worked or earned money all his life. We got married with the hope that he go better. He said he went to a university. I saw him in NYSE uniform, but no other proof that he's a graduate. I never saw his certificate. He would dress well and leave house in the morning. It was later I found out that he was always sitting in the cyber cafe with his friend discussing Yankee. When I became tired of shouldering the responsibility at home, I stepped out and reached my daddy to talk to his friends to help us get a job for him. They told him to bring his CV and certificate. To date, he could not produce any. That was when I became sensitive to his discussion and logic and discovered that this guy was not a university graduate. I met people who went to the same university with him. They didn't know him. My brother then went to the university he mentioned and they confirmed that he was rusticated in year one. The certificate he was scanning was a forgery. The university wanted to take the matter up. But my father quickly stepped into the case quickly. I couldn't continue with the marriage. This is why I divorced. Pauline in Canada says, I was married to a pastor before I left Nigeria. Three years in marriage, I couldn't conceive. Usually people will be suspecting the wife, but I've checked myself and I found out that I had no issue. He had a very low spam count, which ordinarily we began to treat to no avail. Still, people will be thinking I am the one. Secondly, his salary as a pastor is so poor, 20K, and their G.O. is junketing around Nigeria, preaching in all churches and always taking him along. For so many days, I will not see my husband. If he is not on prayer mountain, praying for people, he is following his G.O. around. Over what? 20K. We depended on my salary for survival. No, I couldn't bear this. On Sunday after service, my husband will not come home till Monday afternoon or evening. He is in the church, working with the G.O., following him all over the place as a P.A. A newly married wife like me 
will be home waiting for my husband. Is this how I will continue my life? Please, mentoring master class, let women know what it takes to marry a pastor, especially this young, young pastor that are attached to the GO. I cannot continue. That was why my marriage collapsed. No. This is from Matilda in Enugu. My real name is Obiageli, but I changed it to Matilda to please him. The mistake I made was to marry a man I cannot talk to. I was looking at him up, up there as an achiever. He was looking at me as nobody. It was like a privilege for me to be married to him because of his name, his fame, and money. Any little thing, he would dismiss me by saying, you don't know anything. Later, his language became, you are a small girl. You can't understand. Shut up. You don't measure up. Such words. Later, I began to hear words like, you are a fool. I don't know why I'm married to you. Mentoring masterclass. Tell women not to marry men. They cannot chat, flow, or disagree with. Don't be at the mercy of your husband. Don't be far, far beneath him. That, that you'll be seeing him as your alpha and omega. Any man you cannot look in the eye and tell the truth. Any man you can't tell, get out. Any man you can't say no to, don't marry him. That was the mistake I did. Marry a man you are on the same wavelength with. Rabbi in Bauchi, men will keep you in the house like furniture. Those days are gone. Our men will be gathering women here and there. Irresponsible men, and they expect us to keep quiet. Abiola in Lagos. My husband is not secure and feels threatened by my success. At a stage, I began to fear he could kill me. He will be threatening me that what do you have? You have nothing. I can get all you have with one contract. Since I got married to him, we have never seen the contract. He will come to my shop and fight me. He will be writing rubbish on my social media handles. I blocked him on so many occasions, yet he will open another account under a different name to attack me. He will go to the inboxes of my clients and customers and start abusing them. What manner of insecurity is this? Always complaining and criticizing. Three times he has threatened to stab me with knife. It was my children who gave me the matching order to leave the house and seek for a divorce. Even the DPO warned me to leave him. I used to say God hates divorce and was ready to carry on with his abuses. The DPO told me that this man is mentally unstable and had severe complex issues. We are separated today and the police have told him that if they found him near me or write any rubbish about me on the social media, he will get arrested. Aduke in UK says, I was married to a man who pretended to be sincere and hardworking. A year after our wedding, my daddy died and some buildings were willed to me and my mother. Two years later, my mommy died. And as our only child, I had five buildings. I had thought that I was in a good hand with a good husband to help me manage the inheritances. I didn't care to engage a lawyer to help me as my friend suggested. He began to manage them. All rent and payment were paid into his account. At a stage, I totally depended on him because I don't want anybody to say that I have used his head and would rather ask him for money. That was how he became my ogre. He began to travel anyhow. Sometimes he will not even tell me that he will buy cars at will. He became a big man in the society. And I started hearing that he's dating different women outside. If I call him to account or ask where he's going, Wahala will start. Six months, there will be no sex. There was a time he told me I was an illiterate, that but for him, I will mismanage all the estate. This building belonged to me, Fa. That was when I took all these papers and I called one of my daddy's friends, a senior advocate, to intervene. They recovered all the buildings for me and instructed all the tenants to pay into a different account and took control of the inheritance for me. That was when the threat began. He said he would kill me. This man had no cobo in all these properties. Oh, not a block. When my matter passed, be careful, I sold the building we were living in, the one, the house I built for him in his hometown, I sold it at a cheap, cheap price to a bank. That was how I left Nigeria for the UK. How ungrateful can you men be? He wanted to kill me over the inheritance I had from my father. Wow. These are the reasons women give for asking for divorce. And I believe that uh, you've gained one or two things in this. Remember, this lecture is not to encourage anybody into divorce, no. We just want to find out how did men get it wrong? How did women get it wrong? I believe you've learned one or two things about this. May your home be peaceful in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you so much.
I shall be back shortly with another topic on mentoring masterclass. Bye.